Hey everyone, it's Norm from Tested here, and in this video, I'll be playing through the first 45 minutes to an hour or so of Half-Life Alex. Uh, this is, of course, the just-released VR game from Valve, uh, the latest in the Half-Life franchise. It's set about five years before the events of Half-Life 2, and you play Alex Vance. Uh, the purpose of this video is to give you a sense of some of the world building and VR mechanics that Valve has made for this game. So if you don't have the game yet or you don't have a VR headset, uh, hopefully this will give you a sense of how detailed that world is and what VR brings to Half-Life. So already we're in the beginning of the game. This is City 17, of course, uh, five years before Half-Life 2. The Citadel up there is under construction. The Combine's already taken over the city and the world after that seven-hour war. And you can see I have my hands in the game. I'm playing this right now with the Valve Index headset and controllers. Um, and so it is a game where I can walk around with my room scale set up uh, or I can use the thumbstick to teleport around or continuously move around. I'm using the continuously move settings and so I can walk or walk a little bit faster. I can also turn by physically turning and looking around or I can use the right stick to turn and do a little bit of a snap turn. Uh, I got my hands here with the Valve Index controllers. I have individual finger control uh, with the cap sense, so I can do things like like that. Um, I can I can also you know give the combine the finger. You got your standard thumbs ups, and then I can also interact with a lot of the objects in the world. So I can kind of pinch and pull up the antenna, for example. Let's see. I can, yep, I can also adjust that radio right here. Uh, a lot of these objects are physics objects, so I can grab things, um, empty them out, pick up, what is this? Ooh, water flavor sustenance bar, very cool. Uh, you got these cans here. Something neat is that there's pressure sensitivity on the Valve Index controller, so I can hold and grab this in my palm, but I can also squeeze and crush the cans. Ah! Can't smash them to your head, or can you? You got here some bottles. The art is really high detail. Uh, I can read that says, you know, it's a European style lager, Chesterfield. And do a little bit of juggling, kind of. Oh, not bad. All right, let's head into the world. Hello, pigeon. You can see that as I'm bracing my hands against the surfaces, the animation changes a little bit. So if I try to push my hand through a wall, for example, it won't let me, but it does model the hand and around objects. And I do get a little bit of haptic feedback as well. Uh, it's let me know that I've hit against a solid object. And we go inside. What do we have here? Some notes, pylon 7B and, ooh, so have some dry erase markers. Nice. Let's see what colors we got here. Can I erase it? I can erase it. Oh no, getting rid of all these valuable notes. Woo! Very neat. Uh, this is my second playthrough of the game. I'm doing this as part of the review process, and my review should actually be already out. There will be a link in the description below to that review, and it's gonna be a spoiler-free review. Uh, this first part of the game is still largely considered part of the tutorial, uh, so it won't reveal all of the plot details. Let's listen to what Eli has to say. <laughs> One combine mini reactor from a shipment of 4,000. They're never gonna miss it. Don't get greedy, guys. We're not made of time here. One minute and I'm out. Guaranteed. Oh, also, as part of the Combine moving supplies into the quarantine zone, that place has been deserted for years. Hmm. That is odd. Uh, well, what is well, we'll look into it when we get back. What is this? Meet back at the safe hospital. We'll be there soon. It looks like 
Would you? Terrific. Oh, that's cool. You can actually write on that class right there on those CRTs. Very neat. All right, let me pull this handle. Again, you can see the animation changes as I get my hands closer to here. Let me know that I can interact with it and I do get a little bit of haptic feedback. Two-handed open. All right. Oh, I'm gonna bother those of you who are OCD. Anything behind here? No, nope. can't lift this off the wall, but it's gonna be crooked. I was saying earlier, uh, the first 45 minutes to hour or so uh, will take me through maybe the first chapter, maybe first chapter and a half, show you some of the mechanics, uh, but it's still part of basically the game introducing you to the game world, into uh, the combat, some of the puzzles, uh, and so it won't be a big uh, spoiler as to the story. Uh, I will show you the game menu at some point, actually. Um, and I'll walk through some of those options, but you have things like door handles. Oh, I can push that both ways. Cool. That is a Strider, and seeing that up close in VR is kind of freaky. Push that door open. Ooh, what do you got here? Hello there. Can't lift this up. I can pick this up, and it says this is not coffee. You can see I can hold it a bunch of different ways. I can even feed that little bug here. Oh, how cute. So many things to interact with in the game. So far, very, very detailed game. What is this? Ah, the filming, the building of the Citadel. Very neat. And then I can, of course, pick up things like this. What do we got here? Oh, this looks like early designs for dog. He even says, get it? It's a dog. Pack animals? Very, very cool. Got VHSs here. Throw those in the bin, and let's move on to the next room. There's a cloak or a jacket. There you go, some cloth physics. Can grab it, but I can't take this off of the hanger. All right, no worries. And then you have things like this broom, which I can hold with two hands, and I can kind of throw this around and press the button. Let's go inside the elevator. And I'll hit, how about the green button? All right, on the ground floor, they go to a bunch of NPCs. Let's go hear what she has to say. Mm -hmm. Yep, they got the reactor, easy peasy. I'm headed back to the safe house right now to meet Dad. Go. We'll be in touch. Stay safe. Ah, uh, shoot. Some combine soldiers. City's under lockdown. Yes, I am very childish. Let's 
continue on. Alex, Alex, over here. What is it? This doesn't seem like a routine sweep. Are you sure everything went okay? 100%. Really great NPC detail right there. Here's actually a good example. What happens if I try to push my head through this barrier? It doesn't let me do it, and the game vignettes out. Yeah, walking through here, I'm just astounded by the level of detail of the game world. The textures look fantastic. It feels like City 17. You know, at least how I remember it playing Half-Life 2, but obviously a lot, lot more detailed. Oh, slammed that door in my face. Okay, sure. Let's go this way. Hello, pigeons. Goodbye, pigeons. Let's try to pick this table up. I can't. So, while some objects like these chairs are physics objects, other objects are not. And... I want to walk on top of this table. I can. So I'm using continuous motion right now. I'll walk right up to the table. It'll stop me, but then if I push my right thumbstick up, I'll actually be able to get on top of the table. Ah, a ladder. All right, and I can grab the ladder and climb up, and it pops me up at the very top. Spatial sound is a big thing in VR, and the sound in this game, along with the music, is also really great. Very immersive. Alright, let's grab this handle. Now, if I want to go in there, yep, it's going to teleport me in. Or if I want to teleport back out. Yeah, so uh, while I'm using continuous motion, I actually still have a teleport option. So my right or my left stick is lateral movement, and the right stick, left and right, is snap turn. Uh, but if I pull back on the right stick, I actually do get teleporting as an option. And that's what I would be using to get down here and down there. Oh! No, 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 wait, 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 I just, I just, wait, 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 what did you see? No one! I didn't see anyone! Dad! Hey, wait, wait, no, 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 no! Where are you taking me? Where's my father? Alright, inside the back of a transport vehicle. Uh oh. In case you notice, there was a loading screen. 
So, like in past Half-Life games, it is a continuous story, but uh, there are moments where it does go to black and you pull the trigger to load the next level. Alex, you there? You've, you've got to get moving. Russell, I've been in an accident. I know! I caused it! So technically, not an accident. You've got to get moving. Wait, wait, where's Dad? He's fine. Follow the drone. <laughs> So, All right. Dad's okay, right? Yeah. Well, no. To be honest, he's in huge trouble. But I'm still gone. He was in a separate transport. And you saved me? Well, yes. I had no way of knowing who was in which van. So, yes, the result was when I saved you. Do we know where they're taking him? Criminal holding. And then, when they realize he's Eli Vance, to Nova Prospect. But I'm already working on a plan to get him back. Get close to my lab. Keep following the drone. We'll figure out what to do. Russell, what did you guys find back there? Well, that's the crazy thing. I don't know. Just blurry pictures of a building. The Citadel? No, something else. And whatever it is, they're going to kill anybody who saw it. And anybody who knows anybody who saw it. Which means us and your dad. Russell, just hang on. I'm almost there. ladder so I can climb this ladder like I did before using my hands Oop. It actually pop me up one at a time oh whoa Uh, but you can also teleport up the ladders, is what I was about to say, as opposed to manually climbing them. You also heard Russell mention Nova Prospect, of course, one of the levels in Half-Life 2, so I mean, a lot of references to the places and things that happen, or are going to happen, in Half-Life 2. Ooh, I can take that off. Wow. Ah, oh, our first cabinet. Oh, more VHSs. Again, just like the doors, I can kind of grab them and open them in all sorts of ways, and I'm literally just kind of swinging them open. A lot of opening cabinets in this game. And lockers. Gonna wanna push that big Alex, red button. Hey, let's, wait. My drone's okay, wait. And there's Russell. Nope, it exploded. I'm fine, by the way. Right, good work, Steve. That's the main. This is Russell's lab. It's actually one of the Steam Russell. VR home environments. They've you can download and explore even this, if uh, you don't story. have Half-Life Alex. They're gonna find out what he knows and then, yeah, they, they're gonna kill him. Oh God. But uh, the good news is we've got something they don't. Which is? My plan to get him back. Great, let's hear it. Now, pretty soon they're gonna realize that your dad is not gonna talk. And when that happens, he's off to have his brain sucked out. Russell. Potentially. Uh, maybe not, though. I mean, they, they could just drill into Stop. this. Oh, yeah. Still your dad. Right. Well, what they will do is take him by train from here. This is Eli to Nova Prospect. And if he gets on that train, that's it. Right? Not necessarily. Grab something that represents us. Hmm. Grab something that represents us. How about... This microphone, can't grab that. How about the spoon? Or, ooh, what about this? Anything will do. Yeah, let's get a Geiger counter. Okay, that's you. I thought you said us. 
Well, one of us, me, will have to stay here for this plan to work. All right, fair enough. Just outside, there's a second train that also leads out of City 17, through the quarantine zone. Okay. Both trains intersect here, at Fairview Junction. You take your train, get there before his train, and hack into the controls. That'll let me take over the system. Train comes to a halt, you deal with the combine situation, and we get your dad back. Sounds good. Where's the train I'm taking? Out the back, through the yard. It's decommissioned, but I think I can hack into its controls. Oh, and get yourself a pair of Russells on the way out. Russells? The gloves, Alex. You know, the gravity gloves. I have a few sets through there. You can calibrate them out by the shed. Got it. We can do this, Alex. You got that, didn't you, that I said we could do it? Because we're gonna do it. Yeah, we are. I'm with you every step of the way. That was cool. I could hear him not only in front of me, but also in the headset he gave me. Remember he tossed, had the drone toss me the headset uh, when I escaped from that vehicle. Uh, also has a camera, as you can see, I see the camera feed what he sees, what he can see. So Russell is the NPC character that has kind of that voice in your head. He'll guide you through the game. Um, and he's voiced by Reese Darby, uh, who's a uh, character actor and comedian. You might recognizes uh, him from Jumanji. Well, that's a head crab. Wow. And a head of cabbage. Sorry, Russell. Now he wants us to pick up a pair of Russells. And these are, yes, the gravity gloves. So before I put my hands in there, I'm gonna take a look around. You can see also, another pair of gravity gloves on a mannequin that's being tested, sparking, and oh, did not end well for this mannequin whose hands are blown off. But I will put my hands in there, and now I have the gravity gloves. It's really neat because uh, the valve index controllers are wrapped around my palm uh, and so they actually feel almost like what I would think they would feel like if you're actually wearing electronics on your hand like these gravity gloves. Uh, that bar that you see that goes across the back of Alex's hand feels very much like the bar that's on uh, the valve index controller. And you have what's essentially a HUD here. You have health indicator, uh, that's a resource indicator that we'll talk about a little later on, and just so much little detail on these. All right, let's move on. I'll teleport down there, and we'll head outside to calibrate the gloves. All right, you know how this goes. There should be a bunch of junk down there. Aim at something with your hand open. Targeted. Close your hand. Registered. Now flick your wrist to bring it in. Now catch it. You're on it. Try again. Excellent. Now make a fist. That's it. Yep. One more time. You've got it. Just a little flick of the wrist. That's it. Perfect. We're done. Oh, oh, wait. Uh, I almost forgot. Alex, up here. You're going to need a gun. Don't worry, it's unloaded. Oh. It's unloaded now. Oh, almost forgot. Guns need ammo. Here you go. Got it. Right, heading back to the cob room. All right, so let's talk about the gravity gloves for a minute here and how they work. It's essentially the VR version of the gravity gun uh, from Half-Life 2 and allows me to pull objects close to me, as you heard Russell say. Uh, uh, at least with Valve Index controllers, I'm using the trigger button to highlight and select an object. So you can see as I'm kind of holding my hand out, uh, objects get illuminated. So right now, let's look at that beer bottle right there. It's illuminated, and if I press the index finger, then you can see there's that orange line, and that creates kind of like almost like a fishing line uh, from that object to my hand. And if I move too far away from it, it disappears, of course. And the way I pull it to me is literally a flick of the wrist. And it feels <laughs> really, really good. You can do this with both hands, of course. Uh, if I pick 
two objects. For example, I'm using the uh, helmet on the right hand and that detergent bottle on the left hand. And pull it toward me. Oh, they actually collide it with each other. That's interesting. And you can actually do some a little bit of light juggling with them in the air. I could do this all day. And I'm actually going to put this hat on because you can. Um, Russell also gave me a gun. And to access the gun, I'm actually going to use my thumb and to press down on the trackpad of the index controllers. And when I press that um, and I move up, I can either switch between my hand and the gun, or I can actually move my hand up and it will equip. So as I get more items and weapons in the game, I'll be able to switch between them with that kind of menu system, which becomes very intuitive very quickly. I'm aiming down the sight here, as you can see I'm going to shoot that padlock. Oh, you uh, took care of that lock then. Good. Great. Did have the key for it, but should have given you that. That's, that's on me. And I can grab some ammo and put it over my back and that will store it. I can also eject. You can see the ammo indicator right there. As well as the ability to cock the gun back. Which means? Yeah, you're nowhere near Fairview Junction. You're just outside the QZ. And this is as far as we get by train. Then I'm headed on foot. Good. I'll see if I can get you in some other way. All right. Uh, now might be a good time for me to go through some of the menu options before I proceed further into the quarantine zone, the QZ. Uh, access the menu, I'm actually going to hold the B button and I'll pop the menu up. You can see I'm in chapter two, the quarantine zone, and I'll run through some of the options. Uh, in the options, I have your standard game preferences for difficulty, for the combat. Uh, here are the movement options, and I'll run through a few of those. Actually, if I go to Blink, let's see. Blink is just option where if I, instead of uh, on my left stick doing lateral movement, I now can teleport there and it instantaneously teleports. There is a limit to how far I can teleport. See that right there. It's maybe about 15 feet or so, maybe 20 feet. That's how far I'm teleporting. And... From blink, I can also do shift, and shift is a similar teleport move, but you'll see that the animation actually shows me sliding over. Same amount of distance you can move, and turning is still snap turning. Uh, I prefer that continuous movement, and with continuous movement, there are two options. There's continuous and continuous hand. Continuous hand is where uh, I move and I can actually wave my hand left and right. And that will be my lateral movement uh, in addition to using the thumbstick. And so a lot of VR games, uh, you can kind of instinctually move your hand in the direction uh, or maybe in your head uh, in the direction that you want to go in. And that's where... You go. Uh, I like the standard continuous walk setting. So I'll use continuous. Here you also have the options for hand climbing on ladders, which I showed you earlier. Uh, there's also barnacle lift, uh, and I'll show you that once we see our first barnacle. Quick turn is on, and you can change the amount of degrees you turn. I like sticking to 45 degrees. It's comfortable for me. Uh, going back, you also have interface options. I'm right-handed, so my weapon hand's on the right. Uh, my weapon select orientation, that's what I showed you by pressing that trackpad. Um, you can change that from 
hand, head, or hybrid. That's looking at the weapon when I have it popped up. And also this pause menu, I can change the height and distance it is for me in this volumetric space. There's also an accessibility option to play with just a single controller. That's going to require restarting the game, but that is an, an option. Um, and you guys are watching this in spectator mode. And so there's a spectator HUD, uh, which shows you my health. And I can change the size of that as well as camera smoothing. And so that I have on high, and it's actually uh, capturing what I see from my right eye, uh, which might make a lot of the objects seem a little bit pushed more toward the left. If I go, there's also performance. I'm playing this on ultra fidelity, and you can configure things like shadows, fog, flickering lights, particles, audio, things like the soft cloth, like that jacket I couldn't pull off the hanger, and um, High quality holograms on. Yes, of course. System I'm playing this on is a NVIDIA uh, GTX 1080 um, and running it at 144 hertz on the index and performance has been I great so far. I, I thought the combine sealed up the QZ. Uh, this one must have squirted out. I've heard they've had trouble with barnacle spores outside the containment area, but not about fellas like this. Well, that Probably is one off, then. a zombie. I doubt it. Can't lift him off this ledge, but I can pick up his head and get real close to his ugly mug. That is gross. You know, I like the continuous motion, but I did find while playing through the game using teleport a lot, just because I can move a lot quicker with teleport than I can with just continuous motion. I think in combat, I would do a lot more continuous motion because uh, it would just make more sense to me and my spatial awareness of where I was relative to the enemies. Um, but when just getting through a level, teleporting is real simple. Don't need that box, but I do want that clip. And uh, here is resin. Like resin. And if there's resin around here, there should be a combine fabricator. Keep an eye out. We might be able to upgrade your firepower a bit. So that resin is the thing you collect throughout the game. It really encourages you to look under every nook and cranny, in every cabinet and locker, to find that resin, and you'll be able to use it to upgrade all the weapons. Cool. So uh, this is the first use of the multi-tool. And it's a tool with multiple functions. So, you know, multi-tool. I'm going to press it like I would select a weapon. And whereas the gun is up there, the multi-tool is down here. And this is Alex's multi-tool. Uh, this is one of the puzzles of the game. And it's rerouting electrical systems. And so you can actually see... Behind the wall, that blue line is the current, and as I reach this junction, I can just press the trigger oh, and it'll turn. You need an incredible brand name. Something that really sells it. Who am I gonna sell it to? The combine's not going to be here forever. You should be thinking about the future, Alex. Well, how about I call it the Alex? Hmm. A little derivative of the Russells, but yeah, provisionally, sure. The Alex. Yeah. And that's the simplest implementation of this puzzle. Um, it does pop up throughout the game, and it gets much harder. Ooh, look, it's health station. Oh, health station. Russell, the Combine use these. Are they safe for people? Uh, yeah, I use them all the time. Are you sure? Yeah, they're great. Look, honestly, just pull the handle and put your hand in there. really cool animation and you get haptic feedback as well as these little pins hit uh, the back of your hand. There goes another piece of resin. I throw that on my shoulder. You can see I have two pieces here. I 
This barrel is a large object, so I can't use it, uh, pick it up with the gravity gloves, but I can grab two hands and toss it over. And I can even teleport over it. Here we go, barnacles. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do is walk under it. And, oh, it took my helmet. Completely ate it up. Another piece of resin, Ooh, where'd it go? Um, I have the setting of barnacle lift on, so you'll be able to see uh, as I get lift, uh, go underneath it, it will pick me up. And it is actually lifting me up, and I want to shoot it! And then it'll kind of teleport me back down. Took a little bit of my health. Uh, also, you can see I'm down to two bullets left. Um, so I'm going to eject and replace. And it conveniently gave me another clip here. How'd you meet my dad, anyway? You guys work together at Black Mesa, right? Yeah. Well, no. Tricky place to get a job at, actually. I interviewed a Black Mesa. They said try again in a year. I don't need to tell you what happened after that. Lucky break for me, really. Not a lot of survivors. Honestly, it's a miracle you and your dad got out of there. Yep, they will try eating just about everything. Not always successfully. I love the detail on the barnacle here. Those teeth, it's just so gruesome. Um, I'm using continuous motion here. Oh no! Took that resin. Um, but if I wanted to teleport past it, I'll show you what happens. So right now, let's say I want to get past uh, the barnacle. You can actually see in animation the footsteps. And so the game will simulate what happens if I actually walk through it. So teleporting past a barnacle doesn't actually work. You have to teleport around them. Oh, no. Yeah, so no cheating and getting around situations that you wouldn't normally be able to get through with continuous walking. Another dead guy here. Oh, Crazy gruesome. Let's walk around a little bit and see what's behind door number one. Oh, more ammo. Just looking, Russ. Just looking. Ooh. You can already tell the game is a little bit slower paced than uh, previous Half-Life games. I'm not running, in fact. the quarantine zone is behind this hatch? Yeah, yeah, that's where they keep it. I'll look around for a control panel to open it up. In fact, there is no running. Uh, the fastest I can go is this speed right here, and definitely can go slower by using the analog stick, but... It's a more measured pace. I want to get in that window, so maybe I'll pop on top of this box. Teleport in. Lots of goodies here. Sweet. Cabinets, drawers to open. Lots of fun places and things to explore. Ooh. Never hurts. Looking for resin.
Let's heal up. So those ports pop out throughout the game on systems like this, and you use Alex's multi-tool to interact with that. It's cool. And then handles that are red, just asking to be pulled. It needs power. Aha. Here we have another puzzle. It's a spatial puzzle and a two-handed one as well. So on my left hand, I'm grabbing the sphere. You can see the silhouette of the multi-tool. And I am trying to dodge these red icons and match the blue with the blue. Again, the simplest implementation of this puzzle, it gets you know, much harder later on. Now that I'm walking into the quarantine zone, it just hit me. I don't know anything about the quarantine zone. Well, actually, the word quarantine comes from the Italian quaranta giorni, uh, which means 40 days, the period that all ships were required to be isolated before crew could go ashore during the Black Death. All right. Cool. This is a simple puzzle, and you can see, oh, look at that gross detail. What is that? Oh, it's a rat. It's still moving. I'm allowing this laser to pass through. Ooh, that's another rat. That's an interesting place to take a nap. Simple enough. Hey, Russell, I just found a loose syringe of God knows what. Is this medicine? Does it have a skull and crossbones on it? I don't see one. Probably medicine then. Cool, so this is um, kind of like a syringe that gives you a boost of health, it'll give you a full heart. Uh, and it's a good place to show your inventory. Uh, you don't have like a backpack or anything to store stuff. The ammo you just store over your back, but you can't really access it uh, and see how much you have, uh, except for looking at, like right here, this number shows me that I have 60 bullets left. And that is, uh, I believe, do the math, three of these clips. Um, but if I want to access uh, things like grenades, they actually go into these little wrist portals. And if I hover my hand over it, again, some nice haptics there, a little vibration, I can grab it and then press the button and jab it right into my arm or my chest and give myself a little bit of a health boost. That looks like an explodey type of can. Do you hear that? What is that? Oh boy. Yeah, that, that's the way we gotta go. That's a zombie. Yeah, that Alright, 
That seemed to work. Let's keep doing that. Oh, just so you know, the Russells have a built-in display. It shows your resin, ammo, you know, might come in handy. Got it. Thanks. I'll walk around these guys. Let's enter this train. Put on things like these respirators. How topical. And these wooden boxes can actually find supplies, like ammo. Alright, like I said, right now we're still very much in the tutorial part of the game, showing the mechanics, giving you a sense of things like the barnacles and ways to approach them, like having them consume these gas canisters. Which I could also shoot. Or I could just kind of sneakily walk between them and be all right. We'll jump down here. Oh boy. Yeah, be careful. A little creepy at first, but at this point in the game, not very threatening. Again, just giving you a sense of where to shoot with these zombies. Some wooden planks here. I could shoot or just grab them. And let's take this guy out. funky moment there as it kind of phase into me and here I believe is our first upgrade station Alex I think that's a combine fabricator put something in it I want to see how this thing works Got it. will it work on the Russells? no but it should fix up that pistol nicely good thing too I gave you one of my lesser guns thanks Russell well you know in case it doesn't make it back tell you what Russell if I die I owe you a gun. You owe me a gun anyway. That wasn't a gift. That's my gun. Here's another type of puzzle. Again, a very simple invitation of this to unlock this upgrade station. And these are, I believe, procedurally generated. So they'll be different every time. Uh, and they are uh, volumetric. They're spatial puzzles. So it requires that you kind of move around and look. And in 3D, in a headset, um, it's really something that you can't do um, and you don't get a real good sense of without VR. I have nine resin. I probably need one more if I want to get an upgrade that I want. And I suspect there might be one. Ooh, what's this? Store that in my wrist. Aha! There it goes. An extra piece of resin. Will get me to ten. Empty this bucket of stuffs. My aerosol can't explode if I shoot it. Nope. Put the pistol there, 
And I have enough to upgrade the reflex sight. So that 10 resin I've collected, again, 10 right here. It'll just kind of be stacked in uh, groups of five. Drop that in there. And watch it turn into that. Let's take out these zombies relatively quickly. The reflex sight highlights places that you should shoot. So you can, for example, see that those zombies have weak spots on the head, where the head crab is, and also that explosive canister right there. Let's see if we can wake this zombie up and get them all close to this canister. Oh, throwing stuff at me. All right. See on that armband right there? That's another weak spot. I can shoot that. And he'll explode. Same with the leg here. So it really encourages you to look around using the reflex sight. Find those weak spots. You can see that I'm instinctually looking, turning the pistol and looking at the ammo count. I am gripping it with two hands. Uh, it's more comfortable for me. It steadies my hand that way. Um, but even without doing that, there's not recoil. One hand is just fine. Alright, so I'm going to stop it here because I don't want to get too far into the game, but hopefully that gives you a good sense of some of the mechanics. There's so much more game um, in this. This is just basically the early parts of the tutorial section. Um, and if you have questions about it, please post them in the comments below. I know a bunch of other people are going to be doing live streams and showing a lot of the game. I encourage that you pick it up, uh, find a VR headset, and try it yourself because it really is an amazing, amazing game. One of the best VR games I've ever played. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.